You know, if you're a conservative, a Republican, the press is just brutal. I mean, it is brutal. I feel that they disagree with my policies because they want to have open borders. They want to. They don't mind that people are taking advantage. Right, so of it's the a country. liberal conservative. They don't mind thing. that free trade is stupid trade. Donald Trump with Bill O'Reilly over on Fox discussing media coverage of his campaign. You heard the Donald say the media is against him, but the fact is Trump utilizes the media more effectively than just about anyone else on the campaign trail. So with that in mind, is his criticism of the press fair? Uh, for more, we're pleased to be joined via Skype from our nation's capital by a political reporter at the Hill, Kate with a C. Martell, that's my little affectation for her, a distinctive spelling of Kate, and another distinctive guest from Newsmax Washington, the political editor for National Journal, Josh Kraushaar. Thanks to you both for coming in, and uh, you guys know where I'm coming from, because uh, as a former Republican member of Congress, when you stand up in front of the press corps and you've got an R beside your name, you think the press corps reads that as rejected. I'll just be honest, we don't think we get a fair shake. Uh, Kate, maybe you don't think that's right, but it seems like Trump is going back to a theme that has been a universal lament for Republican politicians. You know, J.D., Donald Trump loves to say he hates the media. But when it comes down to it, I'd call it more of a love-hate relationship because he gets the most media coverage. But I think where it gets a little sticky there is, first, Donald Trump says it's because the media hates conservatives. But I don't even think that kind of touches on the issue because Donald Trump isn't a straight conservative. His policy issues are all over the political spectrum. But what I think it comes down to is that he keeps saying these outlandish headlines and they do make news. And what it comes down to is that if he's going to start, you know, getting in fights with the Pope and making comments about Muslims and Mexicans, that they're going to make headlines and it kind of feeds the media beast. Well, it's interesting. You use the term make headlines from the uh, perspective of the print press. And uh, Josh over there, likewise at National Journal, for you guys in the printed press and, and uh, on the Internet, I, I guess it's headlines. For folks in uh, broadcasting, it's sound bites. Put it all together. What is the Trump magic? Are people just captivated by what he's going to say next, Josh? Well, look, he, he's a reality show star as well as a, a, a successful developer for a reason. He knows how to how to work the New York media and now the national media, and he's gotten, according to the New York Times, almost two billion dollars in earned media, media that he's not paying for, and that's been a big part of, of his success and, and his rise in the Republican ranks so far. But, you know, when he's whining, as he did to Bill O'Reilly, about media coverage, I mean, this is in the context of a Republican primary where he's running against Ted Cruz, who's uh, the favorite of a lot of uh, the conservative grassroots. So it's a little bit, if he was running against Hillary Clinton, if this was a general election uh, landscape, it would look a lot different. But the, the comments he made to Bill O'Reilly aren't going to get quite as positive a sounding board from the conservative movement when, it's up, when he's really fighting up against Ted Cruz. But it is, one, uh, it is one observation that is inherent in Republican campaign rhetoric uh, for voters, regardless of who they support. It's kind of red meat on the campaign trail, I confess from personal experience. Uh, the tale in the numbers from this New York campaign, the Center for Public Integrity reports that Trump spent 13 cents per voter, as opposed to Bernie Sanders, who spent nine bucks per voter. So I guess, Kate, uh, that free media that Josh is talking about, or maybe we call it earned media, whatever you want to call it, it's working for the Donald. This Trump, exactly what Josh said, that, you know, Donald Trump does love the free media attention because whether or not he's getting it, he likes to insult the media, but he loves it. Look at all the attention he's getting. And I think where things get a little sticky is the dynamic between the media and the politicians. And I think a good example of this is a few months ago, Gawker claimed to create a fake Twitter account where they started tweeting Mussolini quotes attributed to Donald Trump and tweeting them at him every day, hoping he would take the bait and retweet one of these. And as he did, and it became the headline. So it kind of, you know, it fuels the beast back and forth. And it's definitely a two-way street more than Donald Trump is leading people to believe through his interviews. Yeah, Gawker, uh, there with uh, their own dirty trick uh, <laughs> on the internet. Now, uh, the folks at Vanity Fair maintain that Silicon Valley created Donald Trump. Here's their reasoning. Uh, Vanity Fair argues that because Silicon Valley created social media platforms and Trump is able to utilize them, 
Without that, uh, he just wouldn't have the success he has. Josh, is that a little too highfalutin, or are they on to something? I mean, that's quite, that's quite a jump, a leap to make that Silicon Valley created Donald Trump because Donald Trump is so pop popular on social media. He has so many followers on Twitter. But, you know, the candidate that, that Silicon Valley executives like it, among Republicans was probably Jeb Bush, uh, maybe Marco Rubio early on in the Republican process. But it's, I don't think if you look at the fundraising numbers that you're going to see a lot of Silicon Valley staffers or executives giving money to, to Republican candidates. And they certainly, the, the people who work in Silicon Valley aren't going to be supporting uh, by the by the vote for the most part Donald Trump in the in the campaign. So in other words, it's kind of a tortured analysis. Okay, gotcha. I know you don't want to speak ill of your colleagues over at Vanity Fair, but I'm hearing you, Josh. Uh, Kate, when when you look at Trump and uh, what he's preparing for, the fact that he's able to convey a simple message, he steps out and says the process is rigged, and so many people just instantly respond to that. Is that uh, is that Donald Trump as a communicator, or is it just the times in which we live in terms of this appeal to populism? 15 seconds. You know, J.D., I think it's a little bit of both. And if you compare social media, how it's grown, that it used to be much more formulaic. But now we have you know, Snapchat and Facebook Live and things where there aren't any hoops or barriers to be able to post things. I think it kind of raises the bar of what can be said. And Donald Trump is the epitome of that media attention that you know, it can get more and more attention and can lead a campaign and kind of raises the bar for what's a gaffe. And we will have to uh, close it down because our time is gone. Kate Martell and Josh Crossauer, we thank you for your analysis. Back with more after this.